Your friends are scrolling through short content, but you, my friend, you're here to learn. Welcome to the RS Clips. Do we know everything about our solar system? No. So, okay, someone had actually pitched this on the show. I think it was Abhijit Chawda. He said that there could even be more planets around our sun, which are revolving around our sun, which maybe we've not discovered. Is that true or not? Um, there is a possibility of uh, another planet, which is actually uh, 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 possible in the sense that there is some... So how do you know there are how many planets are there? How the heck are you going to say that there is another one more or 10 more? Or how are you, go how are you even finding out that, right? So there are orbital calculations you do. Just like the way you orbital calculations for, you know, from here to Mars, if you want to travel, how do you, how much force you have to put? So if you put the force, you actually reach there. So that means you have calculated the parameters, which including the distance, the mass, everything is correct. But when you do this orbital dynamics and you don't have to actually go there, but then predict that everything orbit is actually coming, closing, there would be uh, there would be errors or there would be, uh, let's say, um, uh, when you actually have a model and the observation, you compare it, there will be residual. We call it as a residual. As in gravitational pull is happening because of something, but yeah, you don't so know what. Yeah, so your theory is not completely correct with the observation. Something is missing. Okay. So then that in that mismatch can be said that maybe because of something which is, we have not accounted for something. Okay. And wow. that is basically possible that, yeah. Okay. So you're saying that when you apply mathematics to our solar system, yeah. there is a lot of factors that come into play, orbital length, gravitational pull, etc. Yes, yes. And when you guys as astrophysicists deep dive into this mathematics, there is some unknown factor which is causing a residual gravitational pull or affecting the other yeah, planets. Yes, so the model is, not, model is not matching with the uh, data. So what basically in astronomy we does we do is it's not like in laboratory where you can actually do it and wait and say that and all that, yeah. right? So you get the data and then you have to have a model theory that this is how it is, physics-based theory and mathematics-based theory. This is my model, it has to fit it. Okay. So then you actually say that okay, at this time the the Pluto has to come back to this, for example, has to come back to this exact point with this ex exact uh, precision. Now, according to your theory, this is what is predicted, but it might not do that. It might give a residual. It, close to it, but not exact. Okay. Now, that would mean that in your theory, you have not, in your model, you have not accounted for something. Mm. Something is missing. Mm. But you have to figure out what is that is missing. There's some mystery in the mathematics of our solar system. Uh, not mystery in the mathematics, but something which is some component which is not fully accounted for. Okay. So that probably can give a residual. And what are the yeah. theories? That there is a black hole, I think. Uh, uh, there is somewhere. a small particle which we are not able to detect or not able to uh, uh, properly get its orbit. Okay. So there are some, I'm not very well sure about it, what exactly it is, but uh, um, I'm not able to recall what, what exactly it is. But the, there is a mismatch, but then this is very small thing, which is we are missing. So we still have to figure that out. Yeah. Okay. But one of the theories is that it could be another planet. It could be a small uh, outside, outside one, but we can't say it's a planet or a dwarf planet. Yeah, because wow. Pluto itself is a dwarf planet. But if we are able to know about all these random planets we find huh. so far away, hmm. all these X, 1, 2, yes, 3, 4 yes, yes, planets, yes, yes. how do we not know that there could be another planet in our own solar system, which is so tightly packed? Yeah, yeah. So how do we find planets is one, you have to find the, the planets are not emitting light. So you have to get the light, uh, detect, reflected light detected. Okay, it's a highly precision-based one. As in, there's a telescope on Earth which captures the image of the planets? Yeah, so how do we, the question is, you, you, uh, uh, you kind of alluded to, how do we detect planets far away, right? Yeah. So it's a highly precision measurement. Let's say, give me, I'll give you a very simple example of it. Sure. Um, you say the Earth is going around the sun. Uh, sun. But do you say sun is going around the Earth? No. Why? Because my science textbooks taught me the okay. other things. <laughs> <laughs> no, if I say yes, it is possible that we can say the sun is going around the earth. So that is how you, I mean, you start doing science as you start questioning. 
Hmm. Okay, when there are two bodies which are going around each other, the signs also tells you that they go around the center of something called mass. Huh? Center of mass. Like you, what is what is the why is the Earth going around the sun? Because there are there are two bodies, right? One goes around the other. So why is the other one go around the? I mean the uh, the bigger one can why can't the bigger one go around the smaller one? So basically, if you consider two masses of same uh, same oh. mass, let's say two okay. bodies of same mass. Okay, okay, okay. I thought you, when you said center of mass, no, no. I thought you meant Mars, the planet. You know, ma- MAS is mass. 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 Yeah, the total mass. Huh. You have two objects of the same uh, mass. Okay. Yeah. Now, where will they go around? So they there is a center of mass, and they one will go around that center of mass. This also will go around the center of mass. Mm, so it will go it. around like this. Okay, and because the difference in the mass of the Earth and the Sun is so big, exactly. the center of mass is much closer to the Sun. Yeah, closer to the Sun, but not at the center of the Sun. Where is it? somewhere on inside the edge of inside the Sun? Inside the Sun. Yeah. So actually, the Sun will go around that center of mass. Got it. Understood. Yeah. So, so the Sun is actually going around the center of mass. Wow. That's a very small wobble, right? You yeah. can imagine, yeah, small kind of a jitter. It right. will have small wobble. Right. This is the wobble the telescopes have picked up of other stars. Hmm. Understood. It's a very small wobble. Wow. So wow. you have to detect this extremely small wobble. And like I said, why is this wobble happening to this star? Why is this star just doing this? Hmm. It's because of some unseen. Thing going around it. Okay, I, yeah. I I understood exactly what you're saying, but let me just repeat it once for the viewers. Sure. Okay. So basically, according to the laws of gravitation, if there are two massive bodies, a planet and a star, um, you draw a line between the two. You take the mass of each of those. Now, uh, the obviously the star will have a much larger mass. Yes. Uh, therefore, it will pull the center of mass towards itself. Yes. And both those bodies will rotate around the center of mass. Exactly. Now, the planet is quite far away from that star. So, its radius of rotation will be much larger than that star, which will actually have the center of mass within its own body because it's so heavy as a object. So, it has a slight vibration around that center of mass, which is inside its own body. Correct. Now, you're saying that when you look at other solar systems and other stars, other star, you're able to pick up that small vibration. Yeah, some wobble. Yeah, yeah, because of which you're able to understand. Oh, it's got an interference from other planets around it, possibly. Yes. Then you'll look for the other planets. Exactly. That's, That's how... one way, one of the ways of looking at. Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. So this is uh, important, and uh, uh, so this what I'm saying is as the astro astronomy right now is extremely precision based. Hmm. So this precision is what is telling us not only the detection, but also estimation of what kind of planets it can have is one of the ways of detecting planets. Okay. So this, uh, this, we can go quite deep, like, you know, <laughs> small signatures, differences you can uh, do. And uh, uh, even with that, uh, we have not detected the 10. I'm saying that I just wanted to bring it out because... Uh, it's not to do with the detection way in which you have to find out the we we know asteroids which move around so planets would mean that they are not like the stars moving they have a different type of orbits but they have to be very faint you have to pick it up okay. so that is why we are not able to detect anything beyond Pluto even if it is there like the evade yeah the one the, which is evading right the if it is there kind of a thing but we are detecting in terms of gravitation so mm. yeah. you think there's a limitation of our current mathematical methods and our current technology um yeah it could still be yeah the technology could still be improved to figure out how to how to oh, do wow. that but the technology is actually pushing the limit of things because even even the other method of detecting exoplanets is like uh, uh uh, uh, the planet is a very small body and when the planet let's say you i don't know whether people have watched the transit of venus venus goes in front of the it's like a uh, uh, eclipse part but then the venus will go in front of the sun and move very very slowly okay so uh, that tran- transit will be a small dot which will be move in front of the sun like that so when this actual the dot moves along 
the total brightness of the sun will be reduced by about 0.1% or 0.01%, very, very tiny bit. But we are able to detect such variations in other systems. Mm. So that's a high precision, high... Uh, I mean, uh, you have to be very carefully estimating those uh, measurements. So then that is how we are able to estimate it. So it is not possible to even... Uh, we, we, the technology is advanced to the extent that we can actually measure these little deviations. Wow. Though they existed before, we and we were not able to measure. So the technology is the key here. Got it. I still find it so weird that we, we figured out how to kind of map out distant star systems. Yeah. But whatever is near our own sun, yes. we're not able to. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's a strange reality of science. Yes, that's right. Yes. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure you check out this playlist for more videos just like this. It's the artist clips.